Welcome to Shraf's technical series. In today's session, we will discuss Shraf's rolling statistics page. Rolling statistics page can be used to view summary statistics of uh, a data frame, which is usually a price data frame. For example, in this screenshot, I have selected the AMD, Advanced Micro Devices uh, data frame, price data frame. And then the screenshot shows the summary statistics of that data frame. For example, we always use the adjusted closed for adjusted closed column for the analysis because adjusted closed column would adjust the price for div, uh, splits, reverse or um, uh, multiple splits. So this is the adjusted closed price graph from 1980 to 2023. And the data frame shows the summary statistics in this format. So we show the count. Count is the number of uh, the count of this column. So volume count, number of obs observations for the volume, then the volume high, low, open, and adjusted close. So it's the same count for all the columns. So we have around 10, 933 3 observations in the data frame. Then the mean for volume is around this many uh, volume number of stocks. Similarly, the high for the price was 24, mean high, low is 23, open 23, and adjusted close is around 17. This is mean. So if you look at the AMD stock, it has gone up recently, but the mean is still around here. If you Historically, the mean was very low. Recently, due to the semiconductor uptrend, we see the stock has spiked up. Similarly, standard deviation, uh, min of the adjusted close, etc., and the max. Max is around the adjusted close is 161.91, which is close to this one, 161.91. So it provides the summary statistics of uh, AMD, this format. And then we plot the rolling moving averages for seven days, 21 days, and 255 days in this format. <clears throat> and then the standard rolling standard deviation for seven, 21, and 255 days. If you look at the seven day moving average, it is always close to the current price. That's because current price is here. And the uh, seven-day moving average is close, the, the blue color is close to the current price. So since we are only considering seven days of the history, the seven-day moving average is always close to the current price. 21 day, since it considers the lag, it is a little further behind the current price. And 255-day moving average is further away from the current price because it considers up to 255 observations, almost close to one year. So it is always a lag indicator. So it's always a delayed indicator. So usually if the current price goes below the 255-day moving average, it is the best time to enter the stock because it has gone way low. Similarly, we have a rolling moving standard deviation in this format. So if you look here, uh, the standard deviation is the inverse of the moving average. 255 days, since it considers a lot of history, it is more closer in terms of a spike to the current price because it has considered more volatility. And uh, seven day standard deviation is way too low because it, uh, it doesn't consider much of the history. So it, uh, since it doesn't have that much history, it's always below the 255 day moving average. So the quantitatively moving average and standard deviation are inverse of each other. So a good entry point would be around, uh, if you consider moving averages, then if the stock price is below 255 day moving average, it's uh, usually best time to enter. The stock has gone much low. And in the previous sessions, for the in the time series analysis, we introduce ourselves to the autoregressive model. In an autoregressive model, we try to price the today's stock price with the previous stock price 
which is called an AR model, autoregressive model. And we decided that if, if uh, in the autocorrelation graph, if uh, the dot is above 0 0.2, that implies there is a correlation with the previous day's stock price. So for example, if um, at say day nine, since it's close to 0.2, we can say that on ninth day and on the zeroth day, the stock price are somewhat correlated. So we can do that graphically in this graph, but to make it more systematic, we can use a statistical test called the Dickey-Fuller test. So in the rolling statistics page, we include the Dickey-Fuller test to statistically check if, it, if uh, a time series is autocorrelated. That is, today's price is somewhat correlated with the previous day's prices. So in the documentation, we mentioned what uh, Dickey-Fuller test does. We'll go through the autocorrelation once again, autoregressive model. Like I mentioned, in autoregressive model, we try to model today's price with previous day's price using some constant and some random time, random variable. So it's also called a white noise. So the way we model is, yes, it's a yesterday's price plus something which we cannot model. It's a random thing. Now, when we take a delta of it, delta yt is equal to rho minus one, yt minus one, which is previous day's price. Again, the random walk, white noise. So we get this formula. So the Dickey Fuller test is based on a statistical test called unit root, presence of unit root. If delta is equal to zero, that means delta yt, the change in price from yesterday to today, is dependent only on this random variable or a white noise. So to statistically man, uh, lay down that uh, rule, we have this hypothesis. If p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that data has a unit root and is non-stationary. If p-value is greater than this. If p-value is less or equal to that or does not and the stationary, right? So we have to check for the p-value and see if it is less than 0 0.05 in our Dickey Fuller test. So that's why that's what we did in our uh, in this screenshot. We took Dickey Fuller test, we got the p-values, and p-values are always greater than 0 0.05 our uh, p-value, or uh, if you mentioned that in terms of confidence interval, it is 95% confidence interval. So nowhere are p-values below 0 0.05. Even for last two years, it's 0 0.07, but still above 0 0.05. And if you take last one year, there was so much variable uh, volatility in the stock price, it has just spiked up. It is still above 0 0.05. So Based on that observation, since p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that the data has unit root and it is non-stationary, which makes sense. If you look at the plot, adjusted close plot, it, it, it has kept, if you take this as the mean, but uh, the price is all over the place. So it's just a white noise or a random walk. It's not stationary, it's not mean reverting. It just uh, spikes up and goes here and there. So based on the Dickey Fuller test, we have uh, decided that it is not a stationary time series. It's a random, uh, it's a random walk. Now in Dickey Fuller test, there are two types of tests. One is the basic Dickey Fuller test. There's another Dickey Fuller test called augmented Dickey Fuller test. In, in Shraves, system, we do augmented Dickey Fuller test. And that is because if you look at the stock prices, the stock price goes up all the time. With time, it kept going up. 
or it has some randomness to the price due to change in time. So along with previous day price, we also have to consider the time. So that's why we have to introduce a con another variable called time trend, which is, which is dependent on time and some beta, which is a constant. So now our formula for delta yt change in price becomes this one, where alpha is just a constant. Beta is a constant, but dependent on time, which is called time trend. Then all these variables are based on previous day values, which are from our autoregressive model, yt. So these are also called lags. It depends on how many or previous day values you would like to choose. For example, in this case, we took P lags. It's called P is the lag order of autoregressive process. So we are taking around, say, if P is five, we're taking yesterday, day before, day before, day. So like that, previous five days of data. Sometimes we can take up to 40 days from today till previous 40 days. So this just keeps on growing. And then this is the epsilon t, which is a random variable. Just cannot be modeled, it's a white noise. So that's why when we introduce our time trend, our autoregressive model will be this one. And once we introduce a time trend, we have to use auto uh, augmented Dickey Fuller test. So that's what we did. And, and there are some other uh, descriptions here. If alpha is zero and beta is zero, and there is a unit root, so all of this is zero, then our change in price is dependent only on this way value, which is a white noise. That's what it says, it's a random walk. If just beta is zero, and there is a unit root, so this is zero, that means our delta yt is dependent on alpha and epsilon t. Then it is called a random walk with a drift, because we have a constant here. So if alpha plus epsilon is a random walk with a drift, if it is just epsilon, it is a random walk. So I'll go through the demo quickly. So, so this is the Shraves page. We can uh, go to the statistics page, rolling statistics page here. So once we are at the rolling statistics page, click on any stock for example we'll take uh, we'll take uh, say amazon uh, we'll take merck for example so it takes a bit to load since it has to do the processing in the back end and we got the statistics so we have around 15 4 9 and observations this is uh, less volatile than amd and like I mentioned, the moving average, 255 day moving average is here, seven day moving average is here. This is moving average and this is standard deviation. So moving average, seven day is almost close to current price. Current price is somewhere here. So seven day moving average is close to the current price, 255 day moving average is trailing. In the volatility side, the volatility catches up with the current price, but the moving average, uh, the moving average um, standard deviation trails. It doesn't capture the volatility much because we have only considered seven days. So it's the inverse of uh, moving average. And the Dickey Fuller test, p value is uh, greater than 0 0.05, so it's a random walk. Similarly here, p-value is 0 0.17, 0 0.02. This is less than 0 0.5. So in last five years, we can say there is some kind of uh, stationarity in the time series. So maybe we can use autoregressive model to model the price because it's le less than, p-value is less than 0 0.05. Similarly, last two years, it's greater than 0 0.05. So it's a random walk. And this is also a random walk. If on a two-year basis, we can make some trading decisions because it's uh, it has some on five-year basis.
but not on uh, two and one year basis. Next, I'll quickly go through the code. I'll run all of the uh, the notepad. We take the time series. Once the time series out completes, it will display the notepad output. So we still using gold and our uh, latest price is from 0 2023 and our start date is 1984 November 05. And once it generates, it will display the output I showed in the documentation page, this page. Now I'll go quickly through the code base. In the tiers, we did get rolling statistics. So rolling statistics, then we dis, uh, we create the matplotlib vertical sections. There are nine sections. Then using uh, matplotlib pandas describe, we describe the statistics of the data, which is this one statistics of the data using describe and we round all the columns to three decimal so everything is rounded to three then we use uh, rolling rolling mean rolling mean to plot seven day 21 255 day mean Similarly, for standard deviation, we do 7, 21, 255 days. <clears throat> then we use the augmented Dickey Fuller test to test the, to perform the Dickey Fuller test. So, statsmodlib provides AD Fuller uh, function. We just pass the series to that one. So, that way we. So, using AD Fuller, we do the Dickey Fuller test whole time series and here we do it for specific number of years for example 10 years 5 years 2 years 1 year we do the Dickey Fuller test based on we truncate the series to that many values uh, years of data and then we display in the matplotlib so that's about this so with that I conclude today's session if you have any questions please reach out in the YouTube channel or in the documentation page discussion section.